What's good, guys? This story is coming out of Pennsylvania. Came out on the 9th, which was Friday, via Long Crime in an article wrote by Alberto Lupron. I want to thank Marie722 for sending me this story. Woman admitted she discarded her newborn daughter in a dumpster, and then she flew to California. I will play um, the press conference regarding this incident. A woman has been charged in the 2007 death of her newborn daughter. Tara Brazel, nay Indra Cossett, 44, is the person responsible for dumping an infant in a dumpster behind the YMCA in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, some 14 years ago, according to the local DA's office. She allegedly flew across the country the day after she admitted the crime to investigators. The child, known only as Baby Mary Ann, was found wrapped in a towel and several plastic bags then placed in a canvas bag with her placenta and umbilical cord, said DA Heather Adams in a press conference on Wednesday. Mary Ann was newborn and had gestated to between 35 and 38 weeks, more than eight months, Adams said. An autopsy determined she died from asphyxia, though Adams did not elaborate on the nature of the complications. The DA credited Sergeant Randall Zook with finding Brazel. He took over the investigation in 2016. Investigators turned to the genealogy company Parabond Nano Labs to establish a genetic family tree, but that effort reached a dead end. The closest relatives researchers identified was a second cousin of the infant, Heather Adams said. Zook, however, continued to do separate research. His efforts allegedly led to Brazel, though Adams declined to elaborate on the details linking the child to the mother. This is a picture of Tara Brazel. Uh, who was Tara Indracosset at that time. According to the DA's office, Zook and Detective Jessica Higgins interviewed Brazel at her current home in Valparaiso, Indiana on July the 1st. During the interview, Brazel admitted to being the mother of the baby and giving birth to the baby at her former residence located in Bronx, Strasburg Township, Lancaster County. Brazel indicated that she knew she was pregnant failed to seek any prenatal care for the baby, and did not provide any medical care to the baby after giving birth. According to Brazel, she placed the baby in the trash dumpster located behind the YMCA several days later. Brazel was known by the last name Indercosset in 2007. She worked at the Y near the dumpster. Brazel was not identified as a suspect until the genetic genealogy was performed. The prosecutor declined to comment on the motive. She also declined to elaborate after being asked whether other people helped hide the baby's body. That element of the case is ongoing. The DA's office said that part of the probe is why Brazel was not immediately arrested after her interview. However, law enforcement, law enforcement worked quickly to obtain an arrest warrant when they learned that she had boarded a plane to California the morning after being interviewed. Members of the San Jose Police Department in California arrested her at the airport after she disembarked on the plane. Brazel faces a count of criminal homicide. Online records show she remains at the Santa Clara County Jail as of Friday afternoon and is scheduled for a court hearing to take place Thursday. Let's watch this video. Good morning, everybody. Heather Adams, District Attorney of Lancaster County. I want to thank you all for joining us here today as we announce an arrest in the 2007 homicide of Baby Mary Ann, a cold case investigated by the City Police Department here in Lancaster. Before I get to the details, I want to introduce those joining me here today. Um, from the Lancaster City Bureau of Police, which was the main investigating agency, we have Chief John Bay, Captain Mike Winters, Sergeant Randall Zook, uh, Detective Jessica Higgins, and from my office, Karen Mansfield, who is the supervisor of the Child Abuse and Sexual Assault Unit. As some of you may know, Baby Mary, Barry, sorry, Baby Mary Ann was the name lovingly given to the newborn baby who was discovered deceased in a dumpster behind the YMCA in the city of Lancaster in 2007. The death and circumstances of the discovery of Baby Mary Ann 
had a tremendous impact on this community. Despite a thorough investigation by the Lancaster City Bureau of Police, the case went cold. Today, nearly 14 years later, due to the advances in genetic genealogy and the hard work of the members of the Lancaster City Bureau of Police and many other assisting agencies, we are here to announce the arrest of a suspect in this case. 44-year-old Tara Brazel, the alleged mother of the baby, has been arrested for the 2007 murder of her newborn baby girl known as Baby Marianne. Brazel is charged with one count of criminal homicide and she is presumed innocent. At the time of this crime, Brazel, who was known as Tara Indrakazit, resided in Lancaster and worked at the YMCA, where Baby Marianne was discovered deceased. Brazel has since moved to Valparaiso, Indiana. She was arrested on Friday, July 2nd at the San Jose International Airport in San Jose, California. She is being held at the Santa Clara Sheriff's Department without bail and is pending extradition to Pennsylvania. This investigation began back in September, September 24th of 2007, when police were called to the YMCA after employees discovered a deceased newborn baby in a large tra trash dumpster in the parking lot. This would have been at the old location for the YMCA, which was located at 572 North Queen Street here in the city. The baby was determined to be a female of 35 to 38 weeks gestation. The baby had been wrapped in a towel and several plastic bags and then placed in a canvas bag along with the placenta and the umbilical cord umbilical cord. The Lancaster County Coroner's Office ruled the death a homicide due to complications of asphyxia. Detectives from the Lancaster City Bureau of Police followed multiple leads, investigating tips from the public's public of females who were pregnant or thought to be pregnant at the time. Through DNA samples and other investigatory methods, at least 25 women were ruled out based on those tips. Despite press releases and requests for information, interviews of multiple subjects, and routine checks for matches of the DNA profile of the mother, the case went cold. In 2016, Sergeant Rendell Zook of the Lancaster City Bureau of Police became the lead investigator of the Baby Marianne case. Since then, DNA evidence was submitted to Parabon Nanolabs, the company that has become well known for combining genetic, genetic analysis with genealogical research to determine the ancestry of an unknown individual. With the assistance of Parabon, the baby's DNA was uploaded into a public genetic genealogy database in November 2018, where the closest relation found to the baby was a second cousin. Sergeant Zook continued to work with Parabon, but performed extensive research himself using a variety of genealogy resources open source information, and police databases to essentially build what would become a reverse family tree back to the baby. Sergeant Zook, after hundreds of hours, was ultimately able to piece together a very intricate connection between the baby and the alleged mother, Tara Brazel. On Friday, July 2nd, Sergeant Zook and Detective Jessica Higgins interviewed Brazel at her home in Valparaiso, Indiana. During the interview, Brazel admitted to being the mother of the baby and giving birth to the baby at her former residence, located at 261 Paradise Lane in Ronx, Lancaster County. She told police that she knew she was pregnant, she failed to seek any prenatal care for the baby, and did not provide any medical care to the baby after giving birth. According to Brazel, she placed the baby in the trash dumpster located behind the YMCA several days later. The police did not immediately arrest Brazel after the interview as the investigation was ongoing to determine whether anyone assisted Brazel in the homicide or disposal of the baby. However, law enforcement uh, worked quickly to obtain an arrest warrant when they learned that Brazel had boarded a plane to California the morning after being interviewed by police. Members of the San Jose Police Department in California arrested Brazel as the airport as she got off the plane. 
Lancaster County Detective Jeffrey Bell actually filed the charges in this case uh, on behalf of lead investigator Sergeant Zook simply because the investigation revealed the birth and homicide was alleged to have occurred outside uh, the city of Lancaster. I really can't credit law enforcement enough in this case, and I think it's really because of the persistence and dedication of lead investigator Sergeant Zook and other members of the Lancaster City Bureau of Police that we can now begin the process of holding this suspect accountable and seeking justice for baby Marianne and others impacted by this tragedy. This case was certainly incredibly sad when it happened, and it's certainly incredibly sad now as those with ties to baby Marianne begin to process and grieve a personal loss about which they are only now learning. I would like to thank the members of the Pennsylvania State Police, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Porter County Sheriff's Department in Indiana, the San Jose Police Department in California for their assistance during this investigation. Additionally, at this time, um, we are encouraging anyone with information on this case or that had familiarity with Tara Brazel, who went by the last name of Indra Cossett at the time, um, to please call uh, Sergeant Zook at the Lancaster City Bureau of Police. I'm gonna turn it over briefly before questions to uh, Captain Winters. Thank you. Um, just real briefly, I just have a couple of remarks. Um, this case really comes down to three things. One is uh, persistence. Uh, from the very beginning, our detectives worked uh, diligently uh, investigating every possible lead in this case. And uh, although it, uh, the case became a, a cold case uh, in 2016, Sergeant Zook took the lead on it and really uh, reinitiated the uh, interest in this case. And then uh, worked diligently, and I, I can't stress how much time was spent uh, working on building this this family tree to help identify uh, uh, eventually what we, was determined to be the, the suspect in this case. Um, the uh, science involved in this, and I can't get into specifics, but just the advances in technology allowed us to get to this point, and, uh, and we're so grateful to have that opportunity. And then the collaboration between our office and uh, the teamwork within our organization, uh, all the detectives that mobilized to assist with this investigation, led by Sergeant Zook and assisted by uh, Detective Higgins, and uh, just all the teamwork that went on, and then the collaboration with other, with other agencies, including uh, the arrest that happened in, uh, in California. Uh, this We wouldn't have gotten to this point without the assistance of all those agencies. Um, and then certainly the support of the district attorney and, uh, and ADA Mansfield and all their help uh, just getting us to this point. We're so grateful to be here today. So thank you. Thank you. Again, um, we're at the arrest stage only, so as you're used to me saying, we're somewhat limited in what we can say, but I'd be happy to, to take questions at this time. I'm sorry, can you spell her uh, predecessor name yes. and, and current last name? Uh, current last name is Brazel, B-R-A-Z-Z-L-E. I, I will have a release for you here. Um, Indra Cossett is I-N-D-R-A-K-O-S-I-T. Um, <clears throat> my question would be, has she been on the radar before or talked to at, at all during the investigation at the at the time of the baby was found? We had no reason to, to suspect her. Um, at the time, she, she was an employee of the Y, um, but no, she was not identified as a suspect until uh, the genetic genealogy was performed. Yes? Are you looking into any other suspects who may have helped her cover up this crime, uh, re-anticipating more arrests in this case? So... I can say that the investigation is ongoing at this point. Um, there have been a number of interviews conducted since her arrest on, on Friday, and in, in fact, the police are out uh, right now conducting um, a, a certain angle of this investigation, so it is ongoing at this point. Did she give you any reason on why she committed this crime allegedly? I can't comment on motive at this point. Um, I am limited to the affidavit of, of probable cause, um, and at this point, I just I can't comment on that. Can you talk a, a little bit more about the process of, of the genetic genealogy? So this took 
what, like three years to, to finally backtrack that family tree? Um, th thereabouts, so I can explain it in, in general terms, um, that it was November of uh, 2018 uh, when this distant cousin was found, and then it's a, a matter of um, uh, continuing to work with Parabon and identifying other family members and essentially ruling out branches of different family trees. Um, that particular relative was not in the Pennsylvania area, so it was, it was a matter of trying to connect that branch of a family tree to some connection in Lancaster County, um, which ended up going through uh, both sides uh, of the family tree of, of the baby. And, and there were, it, it wasn't only the, the, you know, what, genetic DNA will get you so far, that analysis will, will get you so far. Um, there have been multiple other investigative techniques uh, since then, which I, I can't elaborate on now, that, that brings us to this point here today. I'm curious, how many, how many cases are you using genetic uh, genealogy um, in terms of cold cases that, that you're still trying to solve? I can't answer that. I'm sorry. Couldn't answer that accurately. Certainly, if there's DNA left at the scene, um, and it's a cold case, then this is a technology that we would be looking at uh, to, to utilize. Um, it's not going to be successful in all cases. In, in this case in particular, the mother's uh, DNA profile, was the, the, the sample was not of uh, such a quality that uh, the, the composite could be drafted, much like you saw in the Mirac case. Um, but it's certainly something that we're going to continue to explore with cold cases. Terrible story. But what never made sense to me was, if she worked at the YMCA at the time this happened, as they say she did, one day she came in pregnant, the next day she didn't have her kid, and nobody questioned that? I mean, was it a case that she just didn't tell them, or told them that everything was fine, or it just... Something doesn't sit right about this case with me. Um, if you have a pregnant employee, they show up back to work with no kid uh, after only a couple of days. I mean, I don't understand. It could have been a whole elaborate plot on her end, and they just can't comment on that. But it's just strange to me. So I'm going to end the story on that note. But uh, I'm glad she is going to... Um, face the music in this case because that's a long time for her to have been out here roaming around knowing what she did thanks for watching guys